Oh, this is the one Stephen Lauren McDaniel. had told her friends multiple times that she felt someone had been inside her apartment, and she also started getting an eerie vibe when she came back alone, especially late at night. It was as though she could sense something wasn't right, and she even thought about- Send me pre watched them all? No, I probably clicked on them, you fucking weirdos. When you guys send me links, I click on them, and then I don't actually end up watching them, but then YouTube shows it as though I watch them. That's how it fucking works. I did not watch this. I have no idea what this case is. I don't even know if it's safe. Is it safe? This is the first video you clicked from chat? Okay. moving multiple times, but unfortunately never went through with it. The reality was that Stephen McDaniel had stolen a master's key from a security guard and let himself into her apartment and looked around on several occasions. He also started filming her when she would leave and return to her apartment during all hours of the day. Had Lauren been in this situation before, or even knew anyone that had, she may have trusted her intuition and unknowingly saved herself from a tragic fate. But that's the key word. Trust. She had no proof of the danger she was in, only conviction, which unfortunately wasn't strong enough when it was most needed. Stephen McDaniel snuck into Lauren's apartment once more, only this time she was sleeping inside. As he crept into her bedroom, she awoke and immediately panicked once she saw the intruder. McDaniel then what pounced the on top fuck? of her and proceeded to strangle her for roughly 15 minutes. Lauren put up a courageous fight and clawed at her attacker's face and chest, but she was eventually overpowered and died of asphyxiation. After the murder, Stephen dismembered Lauren's body in the bathtub with a hacksaw. He cut his what? victim into five pieces, placed each piece in a trash bag, and then disposed of each of them in separate trash cans around campus. Three days later, Lauren's concerned friends would arrive at her apartment and let themselves in with a spare key. McDaniel would notice from his window and invited himself inside as he offered to help. All of her belongings were still inside, including her cell phone, driver's license, and passport. A missing persons report was filed that night. A search party commenced the next morning and police would discover the victim's torso at 9.40 a.m. It was placed in a trash can next to the apartment complex. The rest of the victim's remains were never recovered. The investigation was then switched from a missing person to murder. Police canvassed the surrounding area and began conducting interviews with neighbors and classmates, one of whom was Stephen McDaniel. But he was first interviewed by the local news and at the time was unaware that part of the victim's remains had been discovered. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. I mean, no one has seen her since Saturday. I mean, the last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out, and I mean, no one's heard from her since. What kind of person was she? I mean, how did you, what did you see? I mean, she's as nice as can be. I mean, very personable, very much a people person. Do you know anybody that, any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I, I mean, we, we just don't know where she is. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Right. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people. If they oh know my God! Live there. Are you okay, sir? Oh my god! I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. Oh! This is most likely a genuine reaction disguised as another. He is most likely feeling a sense of fear and shock over the fact a substantial piece of evidence has been discovered. Yet he- Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Oh my god, that's like, I mean, literally caught in 4K. His defense attorney would go on to say that it's actually not 4K. Technically, this is uh, 720p. The cameras were not that good back then. Here you can see that it's actually black and white footage. So how can we really tell if he was uh, distraught as a consequence of, you know, finding out a piece of information that would eventually land him in jail, your honor? Fuck, dude, this is like, I haven't seen someone caught on camera this fucking hard since EDP 445, dude. Holy shit. I'm gonna run that back. I gotta run that back. I'm sorry. Do you know anybody 
that any enemies she might have had, somebody that might want to hurt her? No, I, I mean, we, we just don't know where she is. I mean, what about um, in the like the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? I, I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if this is the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. This is most likely a genuine reaction disguised as another. Bro. That's not him being sad. That's 100% him being worried that he just got fucking caught because this idiot, like, forgot, I guess, to, you know, uh, dump a piece of the fucking body. He's sad for himself, Chatter. Other. He is most likely feeling a sense of fear and shock over the fact a substantial piece of evidence has been discovered. Yet he plays it off as a feeling of sorrow over the loss of his supposed friend. I, I don't know anyone that would want to hurt her. She was as nice person as there is. I, Was she moving soon? Did you know anything about her? Yeah, yeah, she she was going to be moving out uh, today. I, mean, I, I, I why would anyone do this? Maybe I could have helped. <laughs> I mean, they went in, we looked around the place, uh, no sign of a struggle, no sign that anyone had broken in, just nothing. He was interviewed by police at 11.50 a.m. and offered to help in any way he could, yet came across as fidgety and apprehensive the entire time. There were two highlighted moments of the interview. The first was when Stephen asserted that he was a virgin, saving himself for marriage. The second was when the detective discovered scratch marks on his face and stomach, which he asserted were done by himself in his sleep. He at that point unknowingly became the prime suspect and was asked if police could search his apartment. Stephen reluctantly accepted and was then transported back to the complex with four other investigators. While searching his apartment, they discovered a collection of sore- Oh my fucking god, dude. Okay, dude. Well, I already fucking don't show me anything else, dude. All right. All right. Of course. There it is. There you fucking go, dude. Of course. I mean, this is like, this is before Reddit, or not before Reddit, but like, this is literally, this is before, like, there was an incel murderer meta. Birds, guns, toilet rolls, stockpiled provisions as if he was expecting an apocalyptic event, and a mask made out of women's underwear. The most significant discovery, however, was a pack of condoms. Stephen was asked why he would have such an item in his possession if he was staying celibate before marriage, at which point he miraculously confessed to stealing them from another apartment. This gave the detectives probable cause for arrest, and Stephen was placed in handcuffs and brought back to the police station. His interrogation began just after 11 p.m. Alright, I just gotta ask you a few more questions. Okay. Uh, you came down earlier tonight, me and you talked, alright. You don't have any weapons on you, do you? No. That's just you are. What's wrong? You know I'm Detective Patterson, right? Yes. Do you remember? Put your hands up here. You remember us talking yes. earlier tonight, right? Yes. You remember me earlier in the day? Yes. When we came down here and talked a little bit and then we left? Yes. Okay. The monotone dialogue and lifeless demeanor you see here reportedly started on the drive back to the police station, and the suspect's conduct throughout the entire procedure is not only mystifying, but almost impressive. This is one of the most extraordinary pieces of interrogation footage to ever reach the public domain. I need to know about this girl right here. You know her? Yes. Who is that? Lauren Giddings. Does she live next door to you? Yes. When's the last time you seen her? Two or three weeks ago. Okay. Was you friends with Lauren? Yes. Look at me when you talk to me, son. Okay? 
The suspect has morphed himself into this abnormal and extremely creepy character. Whether it's a strategy or some sort of mental breakdown is unclear. But what's incredible is that it somewhat dictates the pace of the interrogation. The detective has just closed the distance and commanded eye contact, both of which are recognized techniques to increase psychological pressure. Yet the absurdly haunting manner in which the suspect turns his head and fixes his gaze unnerves the detective to the point where he becomes the one to look away and reset his posture. This essentially never happens in interrogations as- Oh my fucking god, he mogged him, dude. He broke the detective's frame. That's a Sigma male, boys. That's it. That's a Sigma male. As it can give the suspect an incredible boost in confidence. Look at me when you talk to me, son. Okay? Was you friends with her? Yes. Close friends? We were good I friends. mean, y'all were friends, right? Both yes. of y'all were law students. You're studying to be an attorney, right? Yes. What kind of law do you want to- Oh my God, he broke him, dude. He literally broke him. Look at him, he just like backs away. Go into criminal law? Yes. Civil, is that what you want to do for a living? Yes. Okay. Yes. The detective steps back from his initially aggressive strategy. He asks trivial questions for 35 seconds before attempting to ramp up the pressure in a more subtle manner. And you've lived next to Lauren for a long time? Yes. Okay. Do you know where she's at tonight? No. Hmm? No. Have you ever seen her with that dress on? No. You have no idea where she's at? No. <laughs> this fucking cop, dude. Oh my god, dude. He's literally like, this is every... This is, this is like a meme of a fucking police officer, dude. Hold on now, gotta pick up a fucking phone call here. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yes. Look. Just tell me what happened, brother. I don't know. Dude, he has not stopped looking at him. What the fuck? His arms don't move. Yo, this dude is... Lock him up, dude. Lock him up. You know what? I think that chatter who said I'd be a bad cop is so fucking wrong. I would be the best cop. I would just immediately be like, you're creepy. Your vibes are fucked. You're going to jail. I would literally lock people up for fucked vibes, okay? Which would make me the best cop. They would make me police chief in like a week, dude. They'd be like, Hassan. Well, I mean, my name wouldn't be Hassan. They'd be, Hank, you're so good at vibe checking motherfuckers. Like you would literally, you're, you are now the police chief. Well, where's she at? I need you, I'm asking you for your help. I'm a detective and I'm asking you for your help. Can you help me? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You can't help a friend out? I don't know what you need. I need to know where Lauren's at. I don't know. Do you even care that no one can find her? Yes. I mean, I don't know, do you? Yes. Oh my God, dude. Oh, oh shit. He's mogging him, dude. What's up with the pair of underwear that was in your apartment? It was like a mask. It was cut out like a mask, dude. You cut underwear out that looked like a mask? Yo, he's literally doing this because he wants to embarrass him. He actually is doing this. Yo, bro, motherfuckers be like, CC, please. Do you not know how to read, dude? The, ca the captions are literally down there, dude. Anyway. Sorry, I don't know how to read. Can you turn on the captions? <laughs> I can't tell if the captions are on or not. Don't know how to read, but I would like you to turn them on. 
Okay, so the reason why the cop is bringing that up, Hank, yeah. The reason why the cop is bringing the, the fucking underwear up in the way that he is right now, it's not because it's a part of the, uh, it's not because of the, it's a, it's a fucking part of the actual, like, uh, investigation. It could be, but he's not using it as a part of the investigation. He's doing it because he wants to embarrass him a little bit to get a reaction out of him to break him down. No. Are you a knife collector or a knife person or? No. You just like knives? I used to collect swords. I mean, do you know your swords? Yeah. I mean, to sell and trade swords? No. Is that how Lauren looked with the long hair the last time you seen her? Yes. Or she got, that's how she looks? Yes. I mean, earlier today, me and you sit here and talk normal. What's going on with you now? Why are you acting like this? I need to know. Why all of a sudden you're acting like this? Hmm? I don't understand. Okay. Earlier today, we sat here and talked. Bro, you're gonna... Don't say I'm fat shaming, but like... That chair is holding on, dude. That chair is the strongest thing in this room, okay? I mean, this dude is really pushing it, okay? I'm actually shocked he does not fucking break it or fall out of it in any point. I mean, he's like, he's like not sitting normally on it. You know what I mean? Like, even if he wasn't tubby, the chair would still have a hard time holding him up. But now you're acting like you don't know what's going on. Hmm? There's two things that don't break frame in that fucking room, and one of them is the chair. Man, did something happen or something to you? I mean, why are you not, why are you shutting down? Why are you not talking to me? I don't know. You don't know? Are you scared? No. I mean, you're not scared, are you? No. Uh. Steven's demeanor doesn't waver for the first 20 minutes, so the detective eventually takes a more distinctly aggressive approach. He attacks the subject's character to see if it might coax him out of the act and into defending his dignity. You got your ass on that fucking news and stood out there and gave a media report that her mother saw about her missing daughter. And you want me to sit there and tell him that you don't know. Is that what you want me to tell them? Because you're all over the news. You sure stood out there and ran your mouth to the news media. But now you're going to get out here and you don't fucking know. <laughs> you know. You're just a sorry piece of shit that don't give a fuck. Dude, this guy is the worst, dude. What the fuck? Okay, stop, dude. What the fuck, chat? Y'all are way too quick, dude. You're really gonna go to the news media? <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, why'd you tell the media everything? Do you need to see what you told the media today? Yes. It was on the 11 o'clock news. Well, I'm asking you. Tell me. I want to know. I don't know where she is. That ain't what you told the media. You didn't stand in front of that camera and say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need you to tell me what you want me to tell her mother. And then I won't ask you another thing. I'm not going to tell her mother that you don't know. Because her mother saw you on the news tonight. And she cried all the way down to Macon because you had the balls to get on the news and tell everybody everything. So this little act that you're doing right now. Did I, I, I missed it, I guess. What did he say to the media? Like, did he admit to the, doing the murder of the media? Is that what it is? <laughs> everything.
No, but like what? Why is he saying he told the media? Why'd you tell the news media everything? Ain't working with me. Okay. So you just uh, snap out of it and tell me what the hell happened. So we can move on. I don't know. Well, how many times you gonna say I don't know? Hmm? Huh? How many times you gonna say it? If you did something. This one's called... This one's called being a big ham technique, okay? Where you're just being as big and as ham-like as possible. And, uh, really, you don't even know if it's gonna be successful or not. And it, it doesn't even fucking matter. <laughs> you're just trying to... You're just throwing fucking darts at a goddamn board. Kind of like when I do segues to start the ad break at the top of the hour. Every hour. And not a single one of you... Not a single one of you... Not one person knew that it was coming. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah, it's not at the top of the hour, bitch. Let's go, dude. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I did it 12 minutes early. Yeah, you're too busy. Mmm. Let me find another meme that streamer will take a look at and laugh. Woo! Top of the hour, baby. 60 second ad break. If you'd like to no longer see the ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can do it for $5. Or you can subscribe for free. A motherfucking Twitch Prime, baby. Okay, here's the ad break now, boys. So much fun, dude. Multiplayer ad poll. What are you excited to attend once vaccinated? Twitch will reward five bits to the creator for your vote. Sporting events, concerts, happy hour, party. Okay, I'm going to take a look at what the fucking ads are. Uh, what the ad. 184 votes. 350 votes. 551 votes. 739 votes. 9, 1,000 votes. 36% said concerts. 30% said parties. 16% said happy hour. 18% said sporting events. I said, what did I say? I said concerts won. Listen, I have to fucking switch it on you. I have to say it before the top of the hour. <sighs> that you regret. You need to let me know. Subs subscribers have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, those who see ads now, like Twitch changed it. Ads are like multiplayer ads or some shit where they like make you fucking answer a <laughs> okay guys stop okay we're done we're done stop i didn't well who did i don't know whether it was planned or not, the second detective enters the room with a similar strategy of immediate aggression. Rapport development seems to have been collectively thrown by the wayside. What's up, mate? Did you talk to him about his guns? Yeah. When was the last time you shot those guns? I haven't. You've never shot a gun? No. Had you ever shot any gun in your whole life? No. Never? No. What is this, the fucking... Bad cop, fat cop technique? Like, what are they doing? It's just like both cops are bad. They're just... I don't know what's happening, dude. It's just like... <laughs> so you bought three guns that you've never shot? Yes. Why? To have 
<laughs> for what? For what? For what? I'm asking for what? Why do you want to have them? What makes... Did they give you... I mean, tell me why it's important to you to have three guns. Wait, why? What What are you, some fucking pussy libtard, dude? What kind of fucking question is this, dude? This guy has way too southern of an accent to be, like, upset that... This guy has way too southern of an accent to be upset that a motherfucker owns an artillery. Or, you know what I mean? An arsenal, sorry. And not artillery. That's an easy question. Come on, talk to me, buddy. Me and you talked all day today. We ain't had a problem communicating. Why is it important for you to have three guns? Why do you only have three? What the fuck's wrong with you? You should have at least 15. Do you not know? No. You say you don't know where Lauren is, right? Right. You, said, you told me earlier you and Lauren were friends, right? Yes. How, how would you describe y'all's relationship? She was my friend. She was your friend. <laughs> what? Did you ever do things for her? Did she ever do things for you? What did she ever do for you? We talked. We talked? What did y'all talk about? News. The news? Okay. How many times have you been in her apartment with her hanging out? You don't know? If you had to guess, what was just, I mean, one time, two times, three times, what? Maybe two. Maybe two? See, if I had only been somewhere twice, I could remember that. If I had been there over 50 times and you asked me how many times I've been, like, I don't know a lot. But the fact that you've only been there twice, when I say how many times you've been there, you say you don't know. That's just odd to me. Does that make sense to you? Yes. That does make sense? So what I'm saying right now makes sense? No. Listen, listen here. I'm a mad dog with a fat hog, okay? <laughs> I don't know why, like, mullet man is, is uh, playing the, the wild card routine. They call me wild card out here around these parts. You hear me? Lauren's missing. This, this pretty little girl right here, your neighbor, she's missing. Much like Detective 1, Detective 2 now valiantly moves in for the psychological charge. He closes the distance and locks eye contact. His physical demeanor Wait, alongside- at that point, didn't they- didn't the cop already know that, like, they found her fucking body? a prolonged gaze will hopefully crack the suspect's fortified barrier. Once broken, the momentum will commence and the suspect will be more likely to divulge incriminating information. All the detective has to do is maintain eye contact for longer than his adversary. It's a psychological battle of attrition between two opposing forces. And I mean, these they found her torso. I don't think she's missing at that point. I think she's dead. So I don't know why. Oh, it's not confirmed that it's her body at that point? Moments can sometimes last for minutes on end. I know. Me and you both know it's no different than when you was a little kid, right? And you reached in that cookie jar and you got caught after your mama told you not to get that cookie. And when she was, did you get a cookie? No. And whenever you tell a lie, you feel bad about it right then. One, with every lie, there's a chance you're going to get caught. What? And that weighs on you. Because you know you did something bad. Am I right? I didn't do it. You didn't take the cookie? No. It just smell like you've been cleaning up, like you've been using cleaner to clean up. I know what that smells like. My wife smells like that all the time when she cleans the house. You've been using some kind of cleaner to clean up your apartment, haven't you? No. What? 
Stephen, you telling me you live it like a med? How does your apartment get cleaned? I cleaned it. When was the last time you cleaned it, Stephen? I don't remember. Was it this week? No. You mean you go a whole week without cleaning? Yes. Why? That's horrible, Stephen. <laughs> Is this a joke, dude? How was this like? Yo, they they. The only way this gets recovered is if, like, the dude accidentally admits that he, he did the murder or something. Because, like, these guys are so bad. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, does it... Did his wife do a murder? Is that why she's doing cleaning? Like, what, what, what line of reasoning is, is he operating on, dude? My wife's a murderer. That's why I know what cleaning smells like. <laughs> she cleans every time she does a murder. I don't know how else to say it, Stephen. Let me tell you what I think. I think that she was a friend of yours. Look at her right here. I think that she was a friend of yours. And I think something happened, Stephen. You used to watch her come in and out of her apartment, didn't you? No. Well, how y'all doing? We're just talking. See that pretty girl right there? Yes. You telling me you looked at a pretty girl like that and you never once thought, ever? Man. She looks good. Oh my God. You never thought that? What the fuck, dude? Bro, arrest the cop, dog. At this point, he should be like, I'm placing you under citizen's arrest. <laughs> this one's called the rape culture technique. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, this is a pretty elaborate method. For the cop. Um where the cop acts like a rapist himself. Oh my God. Oh my God, the other cop literally went, got food and came back with a big gulp, dude. Oh my God, this is a meme, bro. This is literally a fucking meme. This entire, this entire interrogation is a meme, dude. That's crazy. I was wondering why he left. I don't understand. <laughs> what do you mean you don't understand? Did, you know how when you're sitting there you see a girl walking down the road? And you say, man, that girl looks good. You ever see a good looking girl where you think to yourself, man, that girl looks good? Yes. You never thought that about her? Yes. So you mean to tell me you look at porn on the internet and get off to that, but you never looked at her and said, man, I wonder what it'd be like to have sex with her. Yes. You have? No. Steven. Okay, see, now I'm back to being a bad cop because I would arrest this cop at this point. I'd be like, sorry, you also failed the vibe check. Both of you guys are going to jail now. Okay. Be like, come back in here. Whatever the other detective's name is. Give me your, give me your fucking handcuffs. We're arresting both of these motherfuckers. Okay. God damn, dude. Come on. You wouldn't want to fuck the dead girl. Come on. Aren't you fucking horny? I'm so horny right now. And this is hard, buddy. I know this is hard. And I can tell it's only you want to let it go. I mean, it's obvious what he's trying to do. He's trying to get her to be like, yeah, I found her attractive. Like, I, 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 I desired her. Like, I get that he's trying to do that. He's going about it in the worst way possible. And also, 
it's not even a good like not even a good enough reason to be like well this this person right here it found the victim attractive so oh i guess he must have done the murder then oh there's blood in your apartment steven you didn't get it all up this is the widely recognized futility technique, which is used to make the subject believe it is useless to resist due to the overwhelming evidence against them. It's most effective when the interrogator can play on doubts that already exist in the subject's mind. The only problem here is that Stephen didn't dismember Lauren inside his apartment. It all happened in Lauren's apartment, so the detective's bluff is already called at this point. It didn't all come off. You scrubbed and you wiped. But we can tell that. Don't you watch CSI? Oof. Yeah, we know it. Steven, why oh. is there blood in your bathroom? The detective now completely shifts his strategy from confrontational and aggressive to sympathetic and understanding. He attempts to create a connection and then afford Stephen a more socially acceptable reason for the crime. Bro, this is so bad. He's like just throwing, dude. This I suspect is like closer to what most of these look like. You know, like every motherfucker that watches like cop shows and shit thinks they're going to have like a brilliant, uh, you know, brilliant monologue. And then the guy's going to be like, you debated me into admitting that I was the murderer, sir. You know what I mean? And it's like, this is the reality though. Like, this is how it always works. Yeah, we saw the blood motherfucker. And then like, you know, come on, I get why you'd want to fuck her. Come on. She was hot. She was a hoochie mama. I'm a mad dog with a fat hog. I thought we established that. You know this. <laughs> Come on, admit it. Steven. This is extremely difficult to pull off after a direct confrontation, as there is no established rapport nor trust. The usual routine is the exact opposite. You would first build rapport and then get aggressive once a connection has been attained. I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell it. I wanted to be here with you to go through that process because I know you're not a monster, man. I know you're not a bad guy. You're just a hard-working student trying to pass a bar exam. Does anybody have the, uh, the, the full video that's, like, super fast where it shows everyone else moving except for the kid? Someone sent me, like, a two-minute video. Oh, it comes up in the end? Okay. You ain't got a lot of support from your family, do you? Yes. You do? The strategy fails at the first hurdle. Stephen immediately shuts down the afforded sympathy and reasoning behind the alleged crime, which was the concept of unsupportive parents. But the detective now attempts to roll with it. A lot of people can't say that. And the fact that you do have support from your family should make the things easier because your family wants to feel like they've raised somebody that tells the truth and is honest, right? Yes. Did you hurt that girl, Stephen? No. Have you ever hurt anyone, Stephen? No. you never hurt anyone? No. I've hurt people, Stephen. Oh my God, dude. Yo, what is he doing, dude? You, you guys don't have that kind of... You guys don't have enough evidence to be throwing this hard, brother. What's happening right now? <laughs> what? Again, once again, reconfirmed my original position that I would throw the cop in jail. Okay. That cop needs to be in jail as well. I've made mistakes in my life. Oh my God. Not, He's even going to say you've never hurt anybody. Sometimes people get mad. And they say things they don't mean to say. It hurts. He never kicked a dog or a cat. The lead detective then asks non-confrontational questions for almost 30 minutes, which is most likely to see if it will change the suspect's demeanor and the manner in which he responds. But it doesn't. Stephen maintains the same lifeless disposition which he has now kept up for almost 90 minutes. You know what's crazy? I was talking to people that he works with and everything. They talk about how 
He's yeah. always expresses himself. Well, but he don't know. He's very talkative. Didn't they say you're so talkative, buddy? That you're always so friendly. You stop in and say hello, and you talk. What? Well, why is it that you're acting so short with us tonight? If you if you have all this character and personality about you, why is it that everything that we get from you is yes, no, or I don't know? I don't know. Why are you acting like this, Stephen? You see how I'm able to talk in complete sentences? Like we're having a conversation, but the only thing you're bringing to the table is a yes, no, or I don't know. Stephen, did you hurt that girl? No. Would you tell me if you did? Yes. Have you lied to me at all in this interview? No. Yes, you have, Stephen. When was the last time you did laundry? A few weeks ago. You ain't washed clothes in a few weeks? Yeah. Wow. Bro, this dude spends his entire life on Reddit. No shit he hasn't fucking washed his clothes in, in, in a few weeks. This guy... This guy does not understand, dude. This is a Sigma male that he's talking to, okay? This cop, too much of an alpha male. Doesn't understand the Sigma. The mind of a Sigma. Okay? Sigma males don't shower. It's a lifestyle. He's a gamer. No, you don't. That's another lie. You don't have a lot of clothes. Yes, I do. Nope. You got enough underwear to last you three weeks? Yes. Do you wear the same pair of underwear more than one day? Yes. Why? Because what the it's so fuck? Clean enough to wear. Steven, we're arresting you for being a dirty motherfucker. You, you hear me? We're throwing you got dang jail for never showering, you disgusting motherfucker. <laughs> what, what is he doing? Like, you're under arrest for being a dirty boy. Not the murder. Where's that little girl, Steven? I don't know. Steven, you know. You're going to look at this right here, this little girl right here. And you're going to say you don't know? I know you know. Yes, you know. What are you going to say tomorrow when I say we got your hair with the body? What are you going to say to me then? Steven is the cleanest motherfucker on Reddit. Reddit, Reddit moderator. Literally, the cleanest Reddit moderator. Because you know, like, I go like that. Look at my hair. That's how easy it falls out. Look at all that on your head. You don't think nothing fell out? It did. We just wanted to give you an opportunity to tell it. So you didn't look like a monster at the end. Because you know what? I don't believe that you're a monster, Steven. I believe that you're a good guy. You've been picked on. Girls didn't show you the respect that you deserved. You did something stupid. And I believe you feel bad about it. And that's why you're all freaked out right now. But I'm giving you the opportunity to get right. I'm giving you an opportunity to show everybody you're not a monster, that you feel bad about what happened. Your hair is there, man. Your hair is there. That's right, buddy. See that? Look at it. See how easy? See this stuff right here, your hair? Yeah, it fell out of your head when you was moving the body, Steven. That's right. Do you remember moving the body? No. Yes, you do, Steven. Why, man? Why? This is actually the worst. I, I don't know. Tell me, bud. I didn't do it. Yes, you did, Steven. We want you to, to tell it so that way people are understand you're not a monster. Things just, you got out of control. It's a sickness. Why'd you do it, Steven? He's so bad. Steven, it. why are you going to keep telling that? You hurt that girl. No, I didn't. Yes, you did, Steven. You hurt her, man. She was screaming. Screaming, Steven. Why? And I know you feel bad about it. 
I can see it in your face. What came over you, man? What happened, Stephen? I don't know. I know you don't know. You can't, you couldn't control it, could you? I didn't do it. Stephen! They steal Bro, at this point, I'd just be like, dog, just give me a lawyer. Like, just give me a lawyer because I don't want to fucking hear you anymore. You know what I mean? I don't want to. You just keep fucking badgering me over and over again. I don't want to hear my own name be uttered one more fucking time. He's going to like... What technique is this? Just to be like, you're fucking weirdo, Steven. You don't shower technique. You're here to take it over there? They didn't, did they? That's right. It's all sinking in right now. For the record, remember what this convo looks like versus what the other cops, the convo between the other cops talking to fucking Michael Dreshka, okay? Or whatever the fuck the dude's name was. The murder from the previous story. That's the motherfucker who's trying to get a conviction, doing a horrible job at it. And like, but definitely is convinced that he's the murderer. The other cop watched camera footage of this guy doing a murder and is like, yeah, I don't know. He knows is what you're thinking. Steven, I don't want it to be a game between me and you. I know it hurts and I know you're not an awful person and you want to tell it. Your hair was there, Steven. We've all known it all along. We wanted just to give you an opportunity to tell what happened. Did y'all have sex? No. Did you try to have sex? No. You think about having sex? No. Liar. What kind of man doesn't think about having sex? You said earlier you like girls, right? What? Yes. You said what? she's a pretty girl, right? Yes. What'd you do to her, Steven? I didn't do Don't lie to me. You, what are you, what are you, gay? <laughs> this is called the homophobia technique. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> do anything you're lying you hurt that girl no i didn't sure it didn't that's why you're having this massive meltdown right now the detective quite literally repeats the phrase you hurt that girl to which steven responds no i didn't and this goes on for the best part of 20 minutes perhaps the detective's strategy was to induce mental exhaustion yet it had no effect whatsoever no motherfucker his strategy is nothing Perhaps the detective strategy is just literally being a shit detective. Okay? I mean, th these guys are like trying to be as nice as possible in every situation. Some cops are just shit. That's not a technique. It's not the mental exhaustion technique. He just doesn't have anything, dude. Why did you hurt that girl? I didn't. Why did you hurt her, Steve? I didn't. I've yet to hear JCS say one cop is like just straight up bad at what they're doing. I mean, I've loved watching these videos uh, for the past couple of days with the exception of that one video uh, of like uh, getting a false confession. He very rarely is just like, this cop is just dog shit. <laughs> you heard her, Steve. No, I didn't. They did. We'll take this from me. You don't deserve to look at it. What? Just stay right here, okay? Okay. I appreciate all your cooperation tonight, okay? Okay. I appreciate your cooperation. Bro, he literally broke both of those cops. Imagine getting broken by a motherfucker who's wearing slides, dude. 
He's wearing his knees are exposed. Okay, he's wearing shorts and slides. And he broke both of you adult asses, dude. That's crazy. Officer Stewart's statutory has been defeated. <laughs> What's up, M HUD? Oh my god, he's still not moving, dude. Get the fuck out of here. All right, we're getting ready to go. I just need to discuss a few more things with you. The lead detective now abandons the pursuit of any sort of admission. He instead proceeds to belittle and humiliate the suspect as much as possible. It may have a tactical purpose, but it's more likely out of frustration, alongside the fact he is certain of the suspect's culpability. Where you, I know earlier today you told me you stayed home all weekend, right? In your apartment. Yes. Did anybody see you? Did you talk to anybody over the weekend? Were you on your computer all weekend? Is there any thing I can look at that Bro, I these guys are just being racist towards gamers, okay? Like <laughs> they're literally they're straight dunking on him for being a fucking loser shut in, dude. Now now this is tactical bullying. This technique is called I'm fucking bored and I'm gonna have fun with this guy who's creepy. That's what this technique is called. I can say he couldn't be involved because he was on the computer or he was online <laughs> on a porn site or he was online doing college work or anything that would exclude you as being involved altogether. I mean. Did anybody see you this weekend at the house? Did you go out to get a newspaper? Did you wave to a neighbor or just locked yourself in all week? Yes. Nobody saw you? Are you so blinded by ACAB that you're willing to defend any sort of psycho mur murder at this point? Will that make you feel better? Like as though I'm like defending some fucking weird incel psycho? Is it like these cops are horrible at their jobs, okay? Like, what are you fucking so stupid? Is the boot shoved so far down your throat that like you see two incompetent detectives fail to fucking actually get a goddamn confession out of like a, a, a cold-blooded murderer and you still go, oh my God, they're actually doing great. Here, this is... <laughs> this is not Photoshopped. He literally did this. I mean, he didn't say my partner said you don't like women, Steven. <laughs> hey, yo, look at my cop, dog. I ain't going to jail. <laughs> because you know what it takes to be a cop? Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I do, actually. Just slam your head against the wall a bunch of times. Until you're fucking dumb enough to qualify. <laughs> God damn, dude, these watching these videos like actually brought out some some real fucking over the top like pro cop Andes in here. Jesus Christ. Listen, motherfucker, I admit when like a detective is actually doing really well. <laughs> like I admit that <laughs> these guys don't deserve it. Oh my god. <laughs> he said, can you do this, Steven? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at me, Steven. Can you do this? Stop acting like you can sit in front of a serial killer, though, is not easy. Wait, what? <laughs> Steven, look at me. <laughs> I'm practically vertical, Steve. Or horizontal. Vertical. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Come on, Steven, try it with me.
I mean, dude, dude. Any the moment that you do this in front of a fucking serial killer, they should just take you off the force. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, he's showing him that he's relaxed. <laughs> His feet aren't touching the ground. <laughs> Look at his feet! His feet are in the air, dude! Okay. Okay, okay, we're gonna get back to the video. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what do you just stay in the house all day? Yes. I mean, what do you do all day in the house? I mean, you've always done He's that. He's doing it life. again. You don't have no friends? Have How can you friends. go your whole life without a friend? I have friends. Where they at? <laughs> hmm? Where they at? Have any friends here making? Yes. Name oh. one, because everybody I talked to said they ain't your friend. Ryan Granger, Cass Lawson, Ashley Morehouse, Carmen Love. That's the same people I talked to today, and they're not your friend. Okay. <laughs> this is a one of the reasons interrogations are so fascinating is the ethical vacuum it creates for everyone inside its bubble. In any other circumstance, the detective's behavior here would be considered cruel and reprehensible. He's essentially bullying the suspect, yet the empathy we would normally have is now stripped away through the impression of retribution. We know this person has done something horrific, and the treatment he is now receiving is merited through his own actions. They're not your friend. Uh-oh. Oh, he's going for it again. I mean... It's all over anyways. I just wanted to know what was going on tonight. The game's over, I mean. We know what you did to her, so we just want to know what you, if you were gonna tell us or not. I didn't do anything. Well, that's what you say. But we know different, so you're fucked either way. <laughs> Oh my Before. god. We already know. We know you killed her. We know you put her body in the trash can. The news media knows it. Glenda knows it, your mother. Your sister knows it. Your sister's husband knows it. The one that used to beat your sister. He knows it. What? You know what he said? So he's a crazy motherfucker, is what he said. When I called him. That's your own family calling you crazy. Nobody wants to see you. Nobody's coming to visit you. So you can sit there with that dumb look on your face. But it's over. So how did they end up, like, getting anything out of this? The entire interrogation took over two hours. When sped up by 20,000%, you truly get a glimpse of how remarkable the suspect's catatonic performance was. That's just... 
His mother came to speak with him soon after this moment, and although he maintained his innocence, he immediately snapped out of the zombie-like character. It's difficult to interpret the reasoning behind the performance, whether it was a pre-planned strategy, improvised in the moment, or some type of psychological breakdown is unclear. But whatever it was, it evidently seemed to work, as the interrogators got nothing. The suspect's behavior was so abnormal, they were essentially at a loss with what to do, or where to even start with a specific plan of attack. The evidence, however, was irrefutable. Hundreds of pictures of Lauren were discovered on Dude, thank fucking God, by the way. Because let me tell you something, okay? If it were up to those two detectives, like, trying to get a confession, this dude would be walking free to go out and do murders again, okay? Because those were the two worst detectives we have seen so far on, on the entire JCS, like, uh, library of content. Steven's flash drive, along with multiple video recordings of inside her apartment. A hacksaw was found <sighs> in a supply closet of the apartment complex, and it was marked red with what was later identified as Lauren's blood through DNA testing. The packaging for the exact same hacksaw was found in Steven's apartment. When confronted with the evidence, he took a plea deal to avoid the death penalty, and was rendered a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He is currently being held at the high-security Hancock State Prison in Sparta, Georgia. One of the more discussed elements to the present day is the motive behind the crime. What was the reasoning behind Stephen's actions that night? He asserts that murder was never his intention, but simply the result of momentary panic and confusion, all preceded by the foolish decision to break into an apartment, which stemmed from a potent yet harmless infatuation with a girl he found attractive. He essentially tried to make out that his behavior was devious and calculating, but not evil or perverted. Public opinion on the matter varies, yet the general consensus is that the murder was premeditated, mainly due to the fact that he had bought the hacksaw just days prior to the murder. A popular psychological viewpoint takes us back to the personality of a stalker. Lauren was- Yes, he's harmless. Yes, he's a cold-blooded murderer who uh, strangled his victim for 15 minutes. Yes, they exist. Okay? Set to move out the very same day she was murdered, which brings some to believe that Stephen was terrified by the notion of change. That the person he had been infatuated with and fantasized over for so long was no longer going to be a part of his life. And no matter how obscure and unreciprocated their association was, he couldn't bear the thought of losing her. Rather than Lauren going on to live the promising life that lay ahead of her, and leaving Stephen behind as a forgotten memory, he has now in some abstract manner connected them both forever. Good to be back. Hope you're doing well. This is the sixth and final installment of my Stephen McDaniels commentary. Man. It's been a slog. We are deep in the troll vortex of insanity. I don't think anyone's gone this far. It's like cave diving, but a lot more dangerous. <laughs>